Hey everyone, Alexa Dunn here, and today I am bringing you a little bit of tough love. This one is for my fellow authors, though book reviewers and bloggers out there, I've got some shout outs for you too, and a little bit of advice from, you know, an author to reviewers, but mostly this is about the opposite, and um, I want to talk about we as authors and how to respond to reviews. And that's the thing about it. I don't think, no, it's not that I don't think, you shouldn't. It's a prescriptive. Don't respond to reviews. It's never a good idea. But specifically, I wanna talk about negative reviews. Never, ever, ever, ever respond to negative reviews. Generally speaking, reviews are not for you, the author. Reviews are not for us. Of course we see them and when they're good, it's really exciting. Like we all want to be well received. Like we we these these books come from our hearts and gosh, we hope people love them. But reviews ultimately are really not for the author. Reviews are for readers. The point of a review and the point of criticism is for uh, the potential audience and society, you know, if you're if you're getting a little bit highfalutin about criticism, but to evaluate a potential, you know, works for consumption. Like, do I want to read this book? Would this book interest me? Do I want to see this film or listen to that music? Or in some cases, when it comes to criticism, it is about kind of deeper meaning. But when we're talking about book reviews and specifically the book review community of bloggers and you know booktubers and whatnot. It's very reader audience focused. It's not you know, always about evaluating the uh, meaning of the works, but simply what did I think about this and should other people read it? What, what might you think about it? Is this the right book for you? And so the reviews are for the readers, they're not for the authors. And also the thing is that no work is ever going to be universally loved. I don't think you can come up with a single piece of media that is universally loved. And in fact, authors, the exercise that I give to you to demonstrate this is go to the Goodreads page or Amazon, what have you, but I think Goodreads is a good place of your favorite book, your all time favorite book, like five stars, ride or die favorite book, or just books that you know are really, really popular. And then read the one and two star reviews for those books not everything is for everyone and there's always going to be somewhere out someone out there who doesn't like the thing so negative reviews are inevitable and the thing is that we as authors have to have a code of conduct to follow and really you know there there are ethics involved but let's call it a code of conduct there's the kind of best practices and etiquette and then there's the do's and don'ts, like the code of conduct. And so from a best practices and etiquette perspective, honestly, if you can't handle negative reviews, do not read them. Sometimes this is gonna mean that you can't read your reviews at all. And honestly, that sometimes is the healthiest choice for authors. I know a lot of authors who don't read their reviews at all. They don't even really read the positive ones because it's too tempting to then go, and read the consent, you know, the dissenting opinions about the work. And some of us just negative reviews gut us. They like punch us in the heart and they destroy our self confidence and they make us really, really upset. And it can really derail our creative process and our writing process. And so many of us, when we have a book out, we have to write more books. And so reading reviews is just counterproductive. Even if you think you can handle negative reviews, Sometimes it's hard to talk about this. So there are authors who think they can handle the wide spectrum of criticism that they might receive about their books, but then they lose their freaking shit. This video is not safe for work. They lose their shit and I'm like, holy heck. So I'm talking about authors who behave badly and engage with reviewers and engage really poorly with reviewers. And that's why seriously, never, ever, 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 ever respond to a negative review. Do not talk back. Do not defend your choices. Never threaten to sue someone. Don't give death threats. That's happened. And then on the like worst case scenario extremes, and I'm gonna throw it old school, and if you've been around the book blogging community, you know what I'm talking about. Never ever track down their home address, drive by their house, call their place of employment, 
and go down a rabbit hole of basically stalking the book reviewer. Don't do that. That's that's a terrible idea. But that is an extreme, but it has happened. But just generally speaking, don't talk back. Don't respond to negative reviews because you are never going to be happy. And it, it breaks the fourth wall, so to speak, because the thing is, we're in this weird state with social media where, of course, authors are very, very accessible to readers and reviewers. And the, there is an interaction that happens. And I think that it can really turn and become negative if you are not careful. Because while all readers expect engagement on a certain level, where they don't expect engagement is on criticism. Um, it's almost like you respond and it's all, all of a sudden it's like, what are they doing here? Wait, they're reading this? What? And I know what you're thinking as the author, you're thinking, well, they should realize that I am a person and I am a person with feelings and they shouldn't write those things about me. First of all, they're not writing them about you, they're writing it about your book. PSA, you are not your book. And repeating that to yourself and actually internalizing it is one of the best things you could possibly do as an author, the healthiest thing that you could possibly do as an author. And it's divorcing your sense of self-worth self -worth from your creative work, from your writing, and realizing that someone can criticize your work and they're not attacking you. That's a very important distinction. And of course we want reviewers to acknowledge that there are people behind these books. And I think that most of them do. I don't think that reviewers are, I think they're rarely purposefully cruel. Though I also think that there is a, there's a tone that happens in reviews, like a snark tone that reads really well. It lands very well with readers. And I mean, I've, you know, come at reviews from the reader side. I, I love a good snarky review. And then of course you write a book and you get an agent and you get a book deal and you go, Haha, oh, am I going to eat my words about really enjoying some of those snarky reviews? Time will tell. Um, but meaning I understand both sides of it. Um, you know, I studied journalism. I wanted to be a journalist and there's something to be said for kind of that snarky tone. It's amusing. It's entertaining. And in a lot of cases, criticism is meant to be entertainment. So it's kind of a fine line to walk. And it's an imperfect system in the sense that like, you're not going to change it. Maybe you shouldn't change it. And that's why, again, my advice really is just not to engage and to repeat to yourself, I am not my book reviews are not for me, nothing is universally loved. And, you know, don't engage, don't engage, just never engage. It doesn't end well. It reflects very poorly on the author. The author will come across as immature, as whiny, as in some cases, psychotic, like it, it can really come across as irrational, psychotic behavior to like, go after a reviewer because reviewers so often are just really normal people. Like, they're especially in our industry, they're young, like you could be attacking a teenager, which is never a good look. But in general, they are normal people. And there is a power in balance. You the author, whether you feel this way or not, especially if you're a debut author, I think we can lose sight of this. There's a power in balance, you have power that the reviewer does not have. We're all part of the same community. But there's a power in balance. And so an author going after a reviewer, is never going to end well. It's a really bad look. So just some concrete best practices, advice for my fellow authors. So my first one is if you can't handle it, don't read your reviews. It's completely okay. A lot of people don't read their reviews. Another little hack as an alternative, there is a way to adjust your Goodreads settings so that Goodreads will only show you when you are logged into your author account, your four and or five star reviews. So you can basically have anything below three stars hidden for you, which might make, you know, just, it might be good for your mental health. Another thing I advise is not setting up, or if you have them set off, turn off Google alerts for you, you yourself as an author and your book. And I know that's hard because, you know, sometimes Google alerts can lead to good things, but also sometimes Google alerts will lead you right to an incredibly negative and critical review. And that's just not good for anyone. Now, if you have decided that you you can handle your reviews. You're positive you can handle your your reviews because you're not going to cry. It's not going to derail your your creative process, at least not for long. And you're definitely never, ever, ever, ever going to go after a reviewer. You're never going to respond, right? Um, I am 
one of those authors. I read all my reviews and that's not to terrify any of you who are reading my book and might review it. Um, I promise you I'm a big girl um, and I approach all of my reviews with amusement, to be perfectly honest, and that's my advice. Approach it with a sense of humor, and when you know, oh well, my book can't possibly be for everyone, and there are going to be things in my book that are certainly going to annoy people, and huh, I, I wonder what they have to say. It can be really interesting to see how different people receive the book. Um, I like reading my critical reviews just like I liked reading all of my rejections uh, when I was on submission. Like. It fuels me, it doesn't derail me. But also, like I said, I do laugh about it. Like, I I find it amusing and I find value in all, in all reviews. Also, a nice, funny, kind of like a humorous uh, tip that a friend gave me that I haven't tried, but you know if this works for you. She reads all of her negative reviews in a Bane voice, like Bane from Batman, and she said it makes them hilarious, so like, you do that. Read your reviews as Bane or whatever funny thing might work for you. Tommy Wiseau. Read all your reviews as Tommy Wiseau. Uh, make it kind of a bit more lighthearted than it is because I'll tell you that you're always going to feel a bit upset in the moment even when it's tepid criticism like it's not actually a bad review but they say one thing and you're like oh 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 my god how could you so the next point of advice is vent to your friends so vent privately have like buddies like critique partners who've read your book who can then reassure you oh i love your book you're not crazy um vent to them not too hard <laughs> don't rail on and on and on about a negative review like if you find that you're like really fixating on negative reviews maybe you're you can't handle them and that's when you pull back but like like talk about that review you got for like 10 minutes with your critique partner and then let it go because i promise you when you go back and you read that review in a week it's not going to sound as negative as it did when you first read it because you've inter you've internalized the criticism and you find it amusing and then it's totally fine and generally speaking my tip if you're reading them or not, but especially if you're reading them, is just to assume best intentions on the part of the reviewer. And and as I said, I don't think reviewers set out to be cruel. I do think that there's kind of a, a snarky entertainment tone that does happen, and I think that's what can lead to a lot of the hurt feelings and misunderstandings. But assume best intentions of the reader, meaning I think that every reader goes into a book wanting to fall in love with it, like wanting to have an enjoyable reading experience, and that if they're pointing out things that didn't work for them or even problematic elements, that they're doing it with the best of intentions for the benefit of other potential readers. Um, and this does bring us to kind of a sticky area, which is, well, what if there is something problematic in your book and someone is calling out problematic elements? I don't want to go in depth into what some call call-out culture, that's not the intention or point of this video, other than to say in general, don't get your panties in a twist if you are called out. Meaning don't get angry, it's that don't respond thing. Like don't get angry, don't lash out, don't immediately jump to being defensive. Um, go into critical reviews that might point out problematic elements with an open mind, assuming best intentions of the person who is pointing out the problematic elements. Don't respond rashly and be open to acknowledging that perhaps there are problematic elements in your work. It's bound to happen to all of us and the key is to keep a level head. Don't let it, neither let it destroy you nor propel you to extreme rage or lashing out or doing something that is not a good idea. And, and generally speaking, when it comes to like truly problematic elements, it's best to go in with an open mind, acknowledge any hurt that might have been done, any mistakes that might have been done, and just resolve not to do those things going forward. So that's just like a little nugget of practical advice for a worst case scenario. Now I will say that once in a blue moon, there are troll reviews. They do happen. Some people do troll authors and they do cross a line uh, between, you know, not reviewing the book, but reviewing the author, so to speak, and attacking the author. It does happen, but I'll say that it happens rarely. You have to always remind yourself that criticism is not attack. Criticism, a critical review of your book is not an attack on you. But if you think that 
something has been posted and it is legitimately crossing a line, it's violating the Goodreads terms of service or what have you, and it is attacking you as a person and it's not evaluating the literary merit of your work or the merit of your work, um, you can report that review. I just advise authors, again, to use extreme caution. Don't jump to the conclusion that something is a troll review just because you're not happy with it or you don't like it. But once in a blue moon, sometimes reviewers do cross the line. And I hesitate to call them reviewers because when that happens, they're not really reviewers. They are legitimately trolls. 99.9% .9 of book reviewers are good people. They read because they love to read. They review because they love books and they want to share their thoughts with other people and guide other readers to find great books as well. But you know, that 0.1%, there are exceptions sometimes. And just a final thought for authors. I just want to say that it's really hard to accept, but you, once you're published, you have to start accepting the idea that once you publish, publish something, once your work is out in the universe, it no longer belongs to you. In the sense that once it's available for public consumption, it belongs to the audience, it belongs to the readers. This is something that, you know, I've experienced on the other side because I'm from fandom, and so I've long kind of seen the murky line between an author, an authorial intent, and, you know, what an author wants or feels versus once something's out there and the fans get hold of it and audience gets hold of it, that works can take on a life of their own. It's really tough to wrestle with, but I just wanted to put that out there that it's something that you have to begin the process of acceptance, accepting, of, of accepting that once you, a work is published, it no longer belongs to you, and you can't edit it anymore, and it's out of your hands. And the best thing is just to let let the books belong to the readers, and again, don't read negative reviews if you can't handle it, and never, ever, ever respond. And now, for you, the wonderful book reviewers of the world, I do have a few tips and best practices for you. You're not getting out of this unscathed, although generally speaking, shine on you, bright diamonds. I love reviewers. I support you. But just a few little notes. Mainly, do not tag authors in negative reviews. It is gauche and very, very tacky, and it's just, it's mean. It's really mean. Now, very few reviewers do this, but I st it does happen. And so I, seriously, never tag an author or link them to, you know, like don't email it to them, don't tag them on Twitter or anything of that sort. A negative review. It's just mean because it, it invites them to click on it and then they click and they see what that you gave them two stars and you hate them. And so an author who is opting to avoid negative reviews, you have taken the choice away from them. And that is just, that is inviting, you know, hurt feelings and possibly a response, although authors seriously don't respond, but don't do it. Just don't do it. Don't, don't, no. And then I'll say that you can tag authors in positive reviews. It's actually, it's nice when someone's like, oh, hey, I reviewed your book and they po point it out to you because otherwise you wouldn't know. But my caveat here, you can do it, is not to expect a response. Um, a lot of authors, first of all, there just might be, you know, they might be busy, they might be drafting, or there just might be too much to deal with. Um, and an author also might have a policy, many authors do, not to respond at all to any kind because if they respond and engage to positive criticism or, you know, feedback, then it invites the idea that they should be also responding to negative uh, criticism and feedback. And so the advice that I give to authors is if you are tagged in positive reviews, you know, you can, you can like the tweet, you could even say thank you, but generally speaking, it's totally okay if you don't want to engage. So to you, the reviewers, feel free to tag authors in those or even send them links. Although I think email kind of almost invites a response, so Twitter is a bit safer, but don't expect a response. And then just, you know, a best practice for criticism I mentioned on the author side as well. Uh, be sure when you are writing a review of a book and you're, you're doing criticism that you are commenting on the book and that you are not criticizing the author in the sense that it's not a personal attack. So meaning it's okay to say, I didn't like the way that the author did this in the book and the, you know, blah, 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 but it isn't okay to be like, the author's a bitch. 
this author is an asshole. Like, this author is a terrible person who should not be allowed to write books anymore. That's really kind of crossing a line. Focus on the work, and you can examine authorial intent, but don't directly go after the author. Reviews shouldn't be about the authors, they should be about the books. And just like with authors, that they should assume that reviewers have, you know, the best of intentions. I, I, I advise reviewers to think that about the authors as well. They, most authors have the best of intentions, and sometimes those do go awry. And so that just means that when you are criticizing things that need to be criticized, especially problematic elements, just always remember that the author probably had the best of intentions even if they messed up. So just always remember the human angle. It's going to make your criticism a lot more well-rounded and easier. Um, you're going to get your point across better when you assume best of intentions and don't engage in direct attacks. And then I will say, reviewers, if, if you do that and you are being really circumspect and fair and most, you know, reviews that I've seen pro pointing out problematic elements are fair and the author loses their shit, well, they're messy. It's not you. It's them. But yeah, that's really it. I love reviewers. I love what it brings to the community. I love reading reviews as a reader of books, as we are all readers. And, you know, I mostly really wanted to address the authors in this one, that I've seen some really bad behavior, and it is never okay for an author to attack a reviewer and make them feel small or threatened or anything of that nature. Like, it's just not okay. And so my advice to authors, again, is just oh, don't engage. Don't engage. So I hope that was helpful, that little, that little real, real talk session. Um, I, I know it's hard. I know it's hard on both sides. Um, and, and I, everything I've said is, is easier said than done for sure. It's a process. Like, I'm not going to pretend that I'm not hurt by negative reviews, but, you know, I do my best to process it in a healthy way and seriously never, ever, ever, ever engage. It's just not a good idea. So thank you so much for watching. As always, if you're not subscribed to the channel, feel free to subscribe and hit the notification bell so that you are notified when I post a new video. Any questions or comments down below, I love hearing from you guys. You know, what are your thoughts on this? Because it can be a really sticky area. And you know, as always everyone, happy writing and happy reviewing.